This is the 13th video in the video series of Orbital Mechanics with Python. This one, I'm going to be talking about low thrust. So I think it's worth mentioning uh, kind of what the difference is between low and high thrust. And I guess I'll post a video on this because I'm not going to go too deep into it. But basically, um, low thrust um, is just a much more efficient way. The fuel efficiency is a lot higher than high thrust. But obviously, low thrust takes a lot more time. Uh, where high thrust, you can model it as an instantaneous um, kind of delta V um, to whatever trajectory you're working on. And for both of these, they're useful orbit raising Optimal orbit transfer and interplanetary transfers, both are useful for that. It just depends what your mission calls for and how much fuel, how much mass you want to allocate for your fuel for doing this and how much time you want to be in space. There's a lot of things that goes into design, but that's just kind of the main differences. And again, I'll, I'll post a video because this is a pretty um, kind of big field of orbital mechanics is propulsion. It's a pretty, it's on its own, just very interesting and there's a lot to it. And then so a lot of times you use low thrust for attitude control. Um, because you can't really use a combustion engine for attitude control. There's just not enough um, precision with that. And then one example of a low thrust is solar electric propulsion, uh, which means that you're taking, you have your solar panels, and you're directly feeding that power you get from your solar panels right into your engine. And that's why it's called solar electric propulsion. That's a low thrust method um, where you use an electric engine. And there's many types of electric engines. Um, again, I'll post a video. But um, So we start with the rocket equation, which is what we're going to want. Uh, because, as I said in the last video, you're adding mass to your differential equation because as you thrust, you're, you're losing mass. Um, so you need to model that in order to be able to know what acceleration you're actually going to get out of your engine. Um, so, obviously, I'm not deriving it. I'll post a link. But this is um, kind of an equation where you have ISP, which is your specific impulse. You have the force of your thrust in newtons. M dot is how your mass is changing over time, so how much propellant you're shooting out in kilograms per second. And then G is just G in 9.81, a gravitational constant, which is used in defining ISP, which is a whole other thing. I don't know. That's just arbitrarily how to define, decided to define that. Um, so yeah, you're going to add mass to your state variable, which is changing over time, a good differential equation, which is what I just showed you. And then I'm not going to, I'm going to do this in the next video. Um, but uh, say you want to raise your orbit 10 kilometers, um, you need to have some sort of condition that says, okay, orbit is raised 10 kilometers, now stop propagation. Um, and I'm going to do that in the next video. It's, it's called a stop condition class. I just throw it in there, and then it just automatically does those checks. So for software, uh, 13. Okay. So same thing in PERTS. I want to show this. This is one thing about Python. Actually, I'll show you here. Uh, Python has this uh, function that's bool. So it just tells you bool. It's a boolean. So if a value, whatever value you pass in, it tells you true or false. So say if you bool true... It's going to be true, and then bool false is going to be false, obviously. Oops. Um, but the interesting thing about Python is that when it has, say, an empty list, an empty dictionary, a zero, it's going to return false. So if you say bool zero, you're going to get false. Or bool and an empty list, false. And then I think dictionary was also false. Yeah. Anything, anything that's empty will bool as false. So we're going to use that here. So when you have here, Pert's thrust is actually not true. I messed that one up. Um, it's whatever value because it's initially in the null Pert's. Where's thrust? Thrust is zero. So if you don't pass anything in, thrust is zero, and that's false um, in Python. So you, you can, uh, I guess, how to show it here is that in the previous ones, you say obliqueness equals true. Okay, then do this. Arrow equals true. Okay, do this. But then in this one, you just have to pass in the thrust self.pert's thrust, which you already have right here, you can kind of just use the same variable for two different things. And that's kind of a very Python thing to do, uh, but I take advantage of it because I can, basically. Um, and then I have an example, some example specs for an engine, for a low thrust engine, so you can see. Um, I'm just going to use this one because it has the highest thrust uh, for a low thrust. Um, so the thrust in newtons, because I'm passing this in in newtons, and I'll show you how to make sure you get your units right. 0 0.327 and then Pert's ISP is going to be 4300 and he uses Xenon I guess if you were wondering um, okay so we have that and then initial mass I'll just keep it at 10 just because so you can see the effects pretty easy and this is gonna go for uh, maybe like one hour or something this is gonna be pretty short I actually haven't ran this, so I'll see if I need to uh, kind of change these numbers. But basically, I just want to show kind of what it looks like. Um, okay, I guess we can start with this orbit. It doesn't really matter too much. Actually, no, I'll start with something circular, I think, because... 
Um, let's see, let me drag this because it'll be easier to see, I think, if it's circular. Um, so C radius. And then we'll go plus, say, like uh, 800 kilometers. Cause why not? Make eccentricity 0 0.1. Inclination. Oh, I don't have any of these defined, so I'll just define them. Inclination, I'll just need like 10 or something. Okay. Zero point zero. And then mass zero, so this is gonna be mass zero. I'll show you how to I guess I can keep all of the yeah, I'll just keep I guess we don't really need this. Well we can just see it because why not? Um okay. So zero point one ten degrees. Okay, and then to orbit propagator, there's gonna be a few things that have to be changed. I'll get to the differential equation, but I wanna get to um what needs to be changed here. So for the init function, um Mass zero is still here, so self dot mass, we'll call it mass zero here. Um, because now, so this is your initial, this is your state, um, state array. You're going to change that to seven because now we're adding a new one. And then your initial condition, you need seven. So plus self dot mass zero because of this mass. Um, uh, just the way that you add Python lists together, they concatenate themselves. So it's just, it's just making a one by seven list. Here. And I think that's it for that. And then to get to the differential equation, uh, you're going to add mass here at the end, because I added it to the end of the other one. And then, so to get to the thrust, um, so wait, okay, and then, oh, I forgot thrust direction. So thrust direction, um, I'll do two examples here, where one example is where you're raising your orbit, and another one is when you're kind of, you want to deorbit or just lower your orbit. So thrust direction, and here is an integer. I'm going to have it from 0 to 1. So if it's 1, everything's just the same, and you're thrusting in your velocity vector. And if it's negative 1, you're thrusting directly opposite. And I should mention that this is the simplest way of doing this. Um, but this is not how you would do it optimally. Um, this is just a way to do it. So if you just want to raise your orbit by only thrusting the velocity vector, um, this is how you do it. Uh, I haven't implemented kind of like a thrust profile. That's something I can do later. Um, but it's just kind of just like a simple way of doing this. And it still gives you relatively accurate numbers. It's not optimal, but it's in the ballpark of what you're looking for. So in this first case, I'm going to say thrust direction equals 1. So it just means you're going in your velocity direction. But then if you want to go against it, you'd say negative 1 because it's, it's just going to negate the vector, basically. Um, and, and I'll do that example. So what you want to do, thrust direction... And then normed v, oh, I don't think I've showed this, but normed is just, you have your velocity vector, but you don't want the, um, you only want to know its direction. Um, you don't want its magnitude, so you just want to know what direction you're going to point the thrust vector. So you get the normed. And then normed, I should have at the top of here. Yeah, normed. It's basically just dividing the array by the norm of itself. That's all that's doing. Um, so you only get the, the unit vector of your velocity vector. Um, and your thrust in newtons of whatever thrust you have, and you divide it by mass, which is the state variable, and divide by a thousand because you want this in kilometers per second squared because that's what everything else is in. And then the derivative of your mass, which I'll show side by side here. So this is how your mass is changing over time, and it's negative because it's decreasing. And just you solve for m dot, so you have thrust on top, and divide by per time speed, and divide by 9.81, which is g zero. Pretty simple. And then you pass in dmdt to the last value because it's derivative of mass with respect to time. Um, so you want to pass it into differential equations so then it knows what the mass is going to be at the next time step. So I think that's that for the diffy q. Save that. Uh, yeah, so we have that, have that, mass zero, initial, and perts um, for one hour. I haven't actually run this yet. I ran it for the last time to make sure it worked, but we're just going to go for it here. Um, so you have that for an hour. and Let's just see what kind of bugs we're working with. I guess I don't need this homework example. And again, your computer is not going to be this slow. Mine's just ridiculous. Annoying. 
All right, what is this? What is this? Okay. What? I guess sometimes that happens. I just press Control C and then it was going to pop in the orbit. Uh, okay, this is good. Uh, yeah, so you can see obviously that the orbit is rising, um, and these are pretty arbitrary numbers. And the uh, because it's only ten kilograms, it's rising pretty quickly. Um, yeah, what it rose by a lot, and yeah, eccentricity is small. So yeah, it, it, I just gave it an arbitrary like large amount of thrust. Let's see it from the aerial or from the top view. So you can see how it's kind of rising. I'll run this again to have more. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, yep, I totally forgot to do this. Okay, so when you have property orbit here, this isn't three, it's like that, um, three, six. And then you also want to add self.masses equals self.y. Because sometimes you want to track your mass over time. I guess I'll just show it to you. Self.step and then negative one. Uh, yeah, just negative one because it's the last value. Um, you want to make sure you cut this off because it's no longer t until the end because you have this in the end. And I guess I can write the plot masses function. Um, okay, so I guess I'll run this for a more amount of time, but you can see that this thrust is pretty ridiculously high for this. I'll, I'll make it just like a little bigger. And then we're going to run this for, say, like five hours or six hours, whatever. And then make the time step bigger because there's no need for the smallest time step, especially with my computer being all ridiculous. So that should work. And then I guess while that's going, I'll just write the... Okay, it's not going slow now. All right, you can see the time step's way too big. But uh, you can see, you can see that um, it's increasing, I guess, over time. I guess we'll get a better picture with this with this plot. Oh, yeah, that was a terrible time step. I'm going to redo that. What do codes have? Yeah, center major axis is just increasing pretty steadily. Apple apps, Perry apps, yep, they're all increasing. So let me let me slow down this time step. Um, just go back down to 100, and then maybe do it for like 10 hours. And then I'll do the opposite direction one. I'll see if I can write this. Yeah, so that looks more like it since it's an eccentric orbit. It wasn't perfectly, um, it wasn't circular by any means. And you can see how the orbit is raise, rising here. Yep. And plotting the cos. Yep, your semi-major axis is just increasing as you'd expect. The other stuff, um, I guess eccentricity is decreasing here, uh, which I guess makes sense. I don't know. And yep, as you can guess, Apple apps and Perry apps are also increasing. So that kind of all went according to plan. Um, so I guess I'll do also a negative. Um, so let's just make this like 0 0 one. Um, so it's pretty circular and then make this negative one and then see how that changes. So as you guess, your altitude is now going down. You can see that one coming. Um, it's not as obvious in this plot, but uh, you can see it's kind of circling down. And then plotting the cos, as you would expect. And then in this one, the eccentricity is rising. Um, yep, yeah, so major axis is going down. Pretty vanilla here. And then these should both be, yep, trending downward. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess that's pretty much it for what I wanted to show. You can kind of get an idea of how to model this. Um, I'm not going to do the thrust or the mass plot in this, but basically it, your mass is decreasing linearly. Um, where is it? So it's decreasing linearly because this is a linear function. Um, so that's all that's going to happen. You're going to see your mass just go down in a straight line. It's not really too exciting. So, yeah. And then, so in the next video, I'm going to cover the stop condition class, like I said. So say you only want to raise your orbit by 10 kilometers, you can do that. Or if you want to do orbit until you're at 100 kilometers, where at 100 kilometers, you're considered deorbited. Um, so I'll just show you how to plug that in. And there's other ones, like say, you only want to use a certain amount of mass uh, for your fuel. So you just plug in that number. It's okay. Once I hit this amount of mass, then stop. Um, and I kept the spice files in here because that is what's going to be next. I said it was going to be next in the previous one, but then the stop condition class kind of pairs well with um, the low thrust. So I'm just going to do that first, and then I'm going to that's the spice files. 
And so, yeah, that's it for this video. Just let me know, again, anything too slow, too fast, anything that was going on. And, yeah, thank you for watching.